Hey folks. Unstructured data across every uh, single channel. Awesome. All right, well, we're gonna go through kind of just a pretty well-organized structure. We're gonna talk about updates for Amazon first, and we're gonna talk about what we call full chain sales velocity. It's basically the mechanics of how Amazon works. And you know, if you don't know how Amazon actually works with its organic ranking and whatnot, then you're missing the whole thing. Um, how can you improve conversion rates? For all of you who have the traffic but wonder why you don't have the sales, let's talk about that. And then some tips for holiday 2020. In between, we have a few offers, so we're excited about that as well. To start off with some uh, Amazon updates from summer of 2020, I'm going to do some. Mike's going to do some. I'll just start off with the easiest part. Amazon is overwhelmed. Um, they just had too much business during COVID. So one of their main sources of business was Google Ads. They would advertise the products that they would sell on Amazon, try to pull people from Google Ads into Amazon. And they said, we can't take the business. We can't do any more. So they, they stopped that program. They hired over 100,000 new employees just to keep up with things. And it's really, really hard for them. Um, this, um, this shift in, um, in behavior during COVID um, has been really crazy. You know, we're looking at 35 of our clients here in food and bath and 22 in sporting goods and outdoors. You see that the, um, the growth or the revenue line for this year versus last year by week is just the mouth is opened up, right? And you see year over year difference in terms of sales online since COVID for these clients. It's up 200, 250% for the food and bev. Same thing for sporting goods and outdoor. It's a lot of a lot of new sales. So also a lot more competition for advertising. And Amazon's been thinking about it. Google's been thinking about it. Facebook's been thinking about it. What do we do to compete with with um, this mail, big mind share. So Google started modifying some things to compete with Facebook and Amazon. Amazon even started to do some things to compete with Facebook. And uh, we're gonna kind of give you a high level overview. So kind of put everything into to, um, the pieces into to their puzzle. So right now, um, Facebook is growing a lot, Facebook ads. So everyone kind of wants a piece of whatever Facebook is doing. And they realize that what Facebook is doing is appealing to high lifetime value brands. That's what they figured out. High lifetime value brands can pay for a lot for acquisition. They keep paying after acquisition. They, they do all this funnel activity and it's great. So Google decided to launch something very similar. They launched discovery ads and discovery ads. Basically any one of our clients that is doing well on Facebook and Instagram, we can launch discovery ads, but it's ways to, have your brand discovered on Google Ads and it works really well. So Google is now in the game of high lifetime value brands. They even started to create this um, really cool responsive display um, ad. So you just like upload your logo, your images, your video, and AI uh, figures out what combinations to put where in the display network. Also super effective. Um, so Amazon just decided to do very similar things. They seeded this a few years ago with sponsored brands, but they really started to commit this summer. Uh, Mike, can you talk uh, a little bit about this creative editing side? Absolutely, and honestly, this is something I've been uh, waiting for for years on the Amazon side. So as you mentioned, sponsored brands has existed for a while, but in order to ever edit, what products are you using? Uh, are you showing a uh, logo versus a product image versus a custom image? Uh, for your creative or even just changing out the ad copy. In order to do any of that, you would have to recreate your campaign. You would have to pause the old campaign. And as anybody who's advertised knows, you know that a brand new campaign will always have higher CPCs because there is no quote unquote relevancy because there's no history for Amazon to go back on. This finally allows sellers to one, take more ownership of the creative in their ads. Uh, there's a lot more uh, opportunities in terms of those custom images that I mentioned while also just allowing you to keep campaigns that are working and not have to rebuild something every month that you want to run a test. Awesome. And uh, for the brand store, the new... The yeah. So this was uh, another uh, focus that Amazon uh, recently launched called the Store Spotlight, where uh, traditionally sponsored brand ads, while you could direct people to your storefront, you still needed to have uh, th up to three focus products that were a heavy part of your creative or your collateral. Uh, instead of 
sort of requiring a product focused, Amazon is now allowing you to make each of those featured entities be a specific landing page to a category page within your storefront. So as we can see here with Kitchen Smart, uh, they have each one of their, their sub subcategory pages of coffee makers, toasters, and blenders being used as jumping off points instead of individual products. Awesome. Uh, from their sponsored display is something that Amazon has been growing significantly over the past year. Um, honestly, I, I've not seen Amazon have such a dramatic increase in features and capabilities over such a short time as they've had with sponsored display, which really plays up to how big of a, a, a commitment they have to display this year to compete with Google and, and Facebook. Um, right now, they uh, historically had only allowed you to advertise um, outside of Amazon on their own display network in a semi-remarketing capacity. They now allow you to also use sponsored display for uh, conquesting, where you can put your brand in very prominent above the fold uh, placements on competitor product detail pages. You can also use this for brand defense where you can keep your products on your own pages above the fold to make sure that no one else can conquest on your own uh, product detail pages. Awesome. And sponsored brands video, another very fun one. Uh, we can see an example of it pulling up on the left here. Uh, Amazon has uh, officially taken sponsored brands video out of beta. Uh, this was a mobile only capability. It actually started on uh, Apple iOS only. Uh, and now it's available on uh, both uh, Apple and Android as well as desktop where you can see a sponsored brand ad uh, with an autoplay video. It is still cost per click. You still are only being charged if someone is interacting with your ad. And from what we've seen in, in all of the tests we've run are actually very strong performance from these these video ads. Um, in general, we've seen a lot of different platforms really trying to commit to both uh, display and video uh, as an entity to drive better performance. And by all indications, video has in fact been pretty successful on Amazon. Awesome. So um, folks, by the way, I, I'm sure many of you just want to like circulate this or, or keep keep a PDF copy, you can write to sales at exclusiveconcepts.com and just in the subject line, say Amazon holiday. You can ask for a recording too. The recording will be done a couple hours after this is over. It just takes a little while to produce, but that, that's about it. We'll get that out to you. So um, yeah, just shoot us an email. That's that's all you need and we'll, we'll take care of the rest. Um, well, as we get into full chain sales velocity, which is, you know, like what is the, the driving force of, of Amazon? Make sure we always cover this with everyone. Uh, one of the reasons we're going to cover this is because some of you have not really done enough with Amazon. So very quickly, we want to get a sense of like where everyone's at in terms of their Amazon business right now. And again, this is a good reason why you might want that PDF because we've We've kind of gone through and then thought about what the biggest challenges are for for everyone like if you're just starting off what are those challenges including like the tech setup um if you're gaining momentum which means you you haven't really hit like thirty thousand per month in sales on amazon a lot of it's just building that momentum sales velocity and understanding that a9 algorithm um and then if you're at least at 30k per month then a lot of what your work is is just you know people are trying to take away your strength, either your positions or your buy box, and it changes everything. Um, so we thought it'd be interesting to kind of get a good sense of everyone who's here right now. What stage are you guys in um, when it comes to Amazon? Are you new to Amazon? You're under 30k per month in sales, or you're over 30k? So you guys are really, really focused on this. This is great. Those, those are super quick answers. So thank you folks for for tuning in so attentively. Um, I'll close this out in three, two, one. Let's just show this breakdown. So most of you are well over 30K per month, which is great. Um, that, that's fantastic. Things are a little different for, for you at that level, but why don't you think critically about revisiting some of the steps you may have skipped while you were pursuing this dominance? 25% of you are on your path to have 30K and 17% of you are just looking at it from a distance, trying to figure out well, what's gonna, what's it gonna be like if I do Amazon. So hopefully this is helpful for you as well, even though some details might be hard to, to put into context, right? <clears throat> Let's talk about sales velocity. Um, and uh, so um, 
uh, the full chain aspect of sales velocity. So we're going to kind of break this down into steps. The sales velocity is uh, it is how you show up for keywords in Amazon, how you dominate your market. And typically, there's a, a few steps that we have to go through um, for this type of sales velocity. First, you want to know what keywords you actually are supposed to go after. The demand that you are trying to target manifests itself in all sorts of different keywords. One of the most important things for you to understand is what those keywords are. And then you need to start sorting. Um, I think it's always important to try to figure out which of those keywords are very generic and maybe your product fits a certain percentage of people typing that in. Those are head terms, categorical. And sometimes you can have a product that is less a hit when it comes to an entire categorical phrase. Then there's midtail, where people are specific enough that your product might actually be very relevant, even though someone is not specific about the product, just about the category. Long tail is when people are starting to get very specific about the actual product. Either way, you want to show up for all these type of keywords, ideally. And you work your way from long tail up to head terms as you start to accrue more momentum. You also want to organize your keywords by a different rubric, um, branded conquesting and discovery. And this is so that you can start to set different budgets, different cost per acquisition goals, and that your marketing can actually hit its milestones while hitting multiple milestones or in parallel. So defending your brand, taking over your competitor's space while dominating category terms. To better explain what brand and conquesting and discovery are, if you are Nike, for example, then when you type in any keyword with Nike in it, those results, those are your branded results. But if you type in Adidas, then that's your competitor's result. In both cases, you're trying to take stock of what's going on. So Nike Shoes Men's, Mars Volvo is advertising against Nike. Okay, Nike could have taken that spot. For Adidas, Nike is not advertising. Mars Volvo is once again. But Nike has not even tried to steal sales away from Adidas. And then when you take out Nike, you take out Adidas, then you got your discovery keywords, like right? men's running shoes size 10. And here, um, we don't see either Nike or Adidas. So starts to give you a sense, right? Uh, whoever you are, whatever you're trying to accomplish on Amazon, are you even approaching it the right way? Are you measuring it the right way? Now, ranking in these top spots is the sales velocity. When you type in a phrase into Amazon, whoever's in the top spot is the one, uh, essentially the product that has sold the most units or everyone typing in that phrase over a short period of time. So the number of units you've sold for your product divided by the number of people searching for that phrase, that is a calculation of sales velocity. And whoever has the highest sales velocity gets the top spot. So the process is fairly simple. First, you need to be, if you want to show up number one for a keyword, first you need to get on the map for the keyword and put that keyword in your title tag, your bullets, very simple. Um, follow a good rubric when it comes to your title so you get in uh, a lot of keywords. But now you're on the map. If you're on the map and you're not on page one, you gain no sales. So the first thing you need to do then is advertise for that keyword and if it was the right keyword if it was meant to be then you will make sales for that keyword and as you start to make sales for that keyword and the a9 algorithm starts to resort by sales velocity all of a sudden when you make six sales you're now on that spot right but you keep that spot and you have your ad so you're making six sales here now and six sales there before you know it it's 12 before you know it it's 15 and you've got your top spot now that is out that is kind of building that momentum right uh the third 25 percent of you that said you need to build momentum that's how you build that momentum but now the 58 percent of you are probably in a lot of these top spots and you're defending those positions you can't drop your paid ad now because someone else can catalyze their product to take your spot instead what you want to start to do is think about the next product that you will also bring up to your top results I'm going to keep catalyzing new of your own products, but don't back off. It was very costly to get up to the position, but it'll be just as costly to rebuild if you lose it. Maintaining the position is not that costly. 
what happens when sales velocity is equal? Let's say um, you made one sale in the last two weeks and 50 other products made one sale in the last two weeks. So you guys are all equal, right? But some of those products are going to be on page three and some of them are going to be on page one. So how do you stay at the top of that? And that's when you have to think about some other options as well. So sales velocity is important. Um, obviously some relevance, either using the keyword in the front end or the back end is important. But if those are all equal, then having the keyword in the title will get you a little bit of a boost amongst those 50 with one sale. Put the keyword in the back end, there's the, the keyword section in the back end of each product, bring it into the content, add more filter fields so that Amazon is confident filtering you down with their faceted search. And then all things equal, you got fulfillment and click-through rate and whatnot. But this is typically the go-to um, when your sales velocity is equal. That's where you probably get the most edge you need. We do all this, by the way. We do full sales change, uh, sales velocity uh, management for all the keyword discovery, all the optimization, all the paid ad side reporting, um, organic reporting. We're going to get into some more details on that as well. We'll get into more um, like hard techniques um, now that we've discussed framework uh, as we get into the holiday tips. When you get these visits, when you get this visibility and you're, you're getting a lot of visits, um, then you need to improve conversion rates, right? And there's two different reasons why you may be losing out on conversions. One is you're the only seller of a product. Uh, all the clicks, you know, you'd win the buy box. Um, but your user experience is not as compelling as it could be. You have all this editing capability, but you need to get into images, reviews, et cetera. The other scenario is you are one of many sellers that are all appended to the same ASIN. And you can't even edit. All you can do is some repricing to potentially win the buy box. So you do need to figure out for each of your products, are you on one side or the other? If you have editing capabilities, it's very exciting. Um, here's some some things that we would see and say, this is not gonna work. Um, not using enough bullets. The bullets are very engineering-like. Not enough images, not even clear what the image actually is. Um, a description that looks like um, a blob of text. This is where we start to introduce um, user experience that is meaningful. Um, great body copy is broken down in a way that is marketing friendly, uh, it inspires consumer behavior in a positive way, it is reflective of the um, reviews that people have already uh, posted about the product. So one of the first steps always is read all the reviews, try to summarize it nicely. You want more buyers like the people who are happy. It'll also reduce future bad reviews, it also reduce future returns. So you wanna get more of those qualified visitors. Good description, uses some HTML to organize bullets and make it a little easier to peruse. Reviews are super important. Um, we have an agnostic um, view on this, but we think Feedback 5 and Feedback Genius both have done uh, a great job and we recommend both. So if you don't have reviews coming in yet, um, now's a good time to, to focus on that. If you don't have editing capabilities, then you might be like one of 50 resellers that has a particular product. You just want to win the buy box. In other words, when someone goes to a product and they say, add to cart. You want to be the seller that is fulfilling that order. And you know they could potentially go and look at a lot of other sellers. These are all the people who could fulfill, but only one gets the buy box. And the buy box is won mostly by a combination of your price and your fulfillment method. There are some other things. If you ever, even for the most advanced sellers on Amazon, maybe once in a while you're wondering why you haven't won the buy box in spite of um, being the lowest. You might even be 
the lowest but matched. Other things do come into play, seller rating, inventory, shipping time, your perfect order rate as an account, all come into play, but still price is just about the most important thing. Not a lot of you, when you win the buy box, take full advantage of it though. When you are in the buy box for a product, you can start advertising that product. It sounds like it defeats the purpose, but it doesn't. Imagine you are willing to send out a product that has 2000 reviews and you've won the buy box. And this product has a ridiculously high conversion rate and you're winning all the sales. Currently, you are winning all the sales for all the keywords this product ranks for. But there are other keywords that this product does not rank for. And if you could rank for them, then with the 2,000 reviews and all the history, it would do quite well. So when you're winning the buy box, you should also be thinking about what other keywords can I expand this product into? I am now the steward of this product. What am I going to do with it? In terms of winning the buy box, there is no technology that's better than what Amazon has built itself. It's repressor technology, updates constantly. Even if you have a very low um, ceiling to your, uh, to, to your price, so you say like, I can go down as low as $2, Amazon won't drop it to two. It will try to stay at whatever is gonna make them the most money, but still makes you win the buy box because you were willing to win the buy box. So great tool, nothing keeps up with it as fast. Um, there are other tools, like we have a tool that we built for pricing intelligence that allows us to do a better job of tracking what changes have happened, understanding competitors' movements, taking into account margin and margin changes over time. It's more of like a reporting and strategy tool. But in terms of the actual firing off of reprice, you gotta work with that Amazon tool. Uh, if you're wondering why you should use a repricer, like why would I wanna you know, give a discount? I'm, I'm fine with advertising. If you advertise or you give a discount, those are both points off your margin, no matter what. If you're already in that comfort zone, I'm okay having an advertising cost of sale of 10%, you should be willing to, with no advertising cost of sale, take 10% as a discount. In other words, you have a product that has a 30% margin and you're getting all this traffic because it's a popular product and you're one of the sellers sharing that ASIN. All you have to do is give it a 5% discount to win all the buy box sales. Your final margin is 25%. Other products of yours where you win the buy box already because you're the only seller, you may start with a 30% margin. You're okay with a 10% ACoS. You're not giving any discount, but you're still starting at a lower margin. If you're okay with an A cost of whatever, you should be okay with the discount of the same amount without the A cost. Your combination should be the target. Um, we have a lot to cover in this presentation, but we also just released a really cool technology. So I wanted to quickly see if anyone was interested here. <clears throat> Uh, I'm sure many of you or most of you use Google Ads. During COVID, we've seen insane shifts in Google Ads. Um, virtually um, all the impressions are up for all of Google's um, different entities, uh, real estate entities that they have, but shopping and search specifically are up like skyrocketed, especially because people can't go to brick and mortar. Because there's so many impressions, cost per clicks went down, right? Because Google has more to sell amongst less sellers. So cost per clicks are, are lower. And because people don't have places to buy, urgency is high and conversion rates are high. So then we basically thought there's never been a time like this. Uh, we need to make sure everyone can kind of gauge whether they're doing a good job. So we wanted to build a tool for a long time. And we ended up building it this year. We said it has to be super easy to sign up and get set up. It has to have really good executive level information. So a CEO can look at it and say, hmm, I understand. But also it should have not just like what your problems are, but ideas for boosting performance. What can I do to boost my performance right now? So uh, I'll just go through some of the 
different modules. We broke out, break up Google Shopping by device, and you'll even get a sense of when you have one of us interpret it for you, like um, why is uh, desktop with such a high conversion rate not spending enough? That's a budget limitation. We do the same thing with your search ads, with your display ads, try to break it up by device and try to figure out if your allocations make sense. We'll take all your, you know, we've been talking about brand conquesting and discovery. We do the same thing for Google Ads. We'll say, here's all your brand keywords, your competitors' keywords, and your discovery keywords. How do you perform against all those in Google Ads? It's really cool. How are you doing with all the different types that are available in Google Ads? Are you actually invested in all of them, and can you move things around? It's not an easy view. You don't get this view very easily in Google Ads. That's pretty much the secret here. None of this stuff is easy to get to. If you want to know which products are performing really bad and summarize how much you've wasted on them, you can't do it easily. Trying to figure out your filters, your statistical validity, et cetera, um, takes a little bit of time to understand the interface. We do it for you right away. We got to break it down like what products are good, need attention, they're wasted. We also find out which products are desperately in need of more ad spend. We do the same thing for search terms. What is doing, what is working terribly, then you need to start using more filters. And what keywords might require search query funneling, which is a very advanced technique, but we can explain it to you once we get your scorecard. Then we summarize, trying to help us understand, like, you know, compared to every other scorecard we're looking at, where do you stand? And it's good for you too. Uh, every month you'll have this rerun, so you'll get a sense of whether your score is improving. Uh, some questions people have. How do I sign up? We'll give you a landing page. After you sign in the landing, pa landing page, you put your return on ad spend goal, then it sends you to Google. And Google will have you officially log in to their tools portal. Your agency, if you have one, will not see this at all, which is really cool. And we are a top premier partner. We have over 400 accounts that we manage in Google. Uh, we've been doing this for 23 years and we have clients like I mean, they're in the background here, like HP, Unilever, household names, et cetera. Um, and by the way, this is where people always get stuck. They say, I'm ready. They fill out the form. And again, it sends them to Google where you have to log in. You have to log in with the account that you have connected to your Google AdWords and then give us give access. You're not giving us access. You're giving Google permission to, to connect to our scorecard tool. We won't actually be able to go into your account. We're only pulling the data for the report, and that's why no agency is going to see it. So just really quick, I want to see if anyone wants this analysis. Um, it's free. It's really insightful. We, we've been getting all these um, these write-ins, people saying that we've worked with agencies for years, and no one has ever been able to show us any of this data correctly. You guys just did it for free. Um, okay. I'm excited to uh, personally work with any of you. To uh, interpret the results if you do ask for this. So I'm going to close this out. By the way, it takes about one and a half minutes for you to sign up. We'll close this out in three, two, one. And we'll reach out to you folks that said yes. Holiday tips for 2020. Um, before we go into that, we've had, people asked us for case studies. So if you download the PDF, you get these. Uh, one example is Greek Gear uh, was doing Amazon on their own. We came in and had a 15 month streak before writing this case study um, of growth. Uh, another client, uh, Unique Vintage, as soon as we took over, we increased revenue by 376%. So. Using the right techniques makes a huge difference. Uh, I'm gonna take the mic back to Mike now to walk us through some of these final slides. Sounds good. All right, so first kicking off holiday, we have to address the elephant in the room of Prime Day. Uh, Amazon has pushed this back twice already. Uh, originally in uh, July, pushed to September, now pushed back again to October. 
Uh, we still do not have an official day for Prime Day, uh, but it is currently expected to be that Monday, Tuesday of the 5th and 6th, so that, that first week of October. Um, and really, what can you expect here in, in regards to the overall of holiday is, uh, to be uh, quite honest, with the, the COVID world we live in, there's a whole bunch of unknowns there. But our personal expectations is uh, likely there is going to be either a most likely a, a longer ramp up period for holiday starting with Prime Day, where instead of you may see the ramp up lead into the gigantic uh, period of Cyber Weekend and that ramp up happens towards the end of October, early November, we're expecting that ramp up to start a whole lot earlier. We're expecting the overall holiday period to just be stretched out. Now, likely with this stretching out, we do expect there to be overall higher sales than uh, if there was no longer ramp up period. But we do think that there could be a perceived smaller impact on uh, Cyber Weekend itself, where a lot of those sales that maybe would not have happened until Cyber Weekend, because people are seeing these deals and promotions being run a whole month earlier, we could see a lot of those purchases that people would have otherwise waited on starting in October. And we do look at that as being purposeful by Amazon, as Nick mentioned. Uh, overall sales have been, if anything, too high for Amazon as a platform. They've had a hard time keeping up. And we do anticipate there being the potential for a uh, shorter shipping window this year because of just too many questions around uh, overall fulfillment methods, especially when we consider last year Amazon did uh, discontinue their partnership with FedEx, leaving everything to just AMZL and uh, U U uh, UPS, excuse me. Um, if that is to happen again this year, we can anticipate even more delays in shipping. So Amazon does have a lot of reason to want to uh, really extend this window and, and have less consolidated sales within a couple of days and stretch out that, that period to uh, lessen the burden on shipping. Awesome. Uh, what's new for Amazon advertising? We already uh, touched on a handful of these factors earlier on with sponsored uh, display and sponsored brands, but a few extra things just in case you uh, are not uh, available for them or uh, aware of them. Uh, automatic targets, uh, I have mentioned this a few times before, but this is so important. Amazon finally gives you as a seller more control over your ads within the automatic campaign space where you can now more easily target whether or not you are serving your product to people looking for something exactly in your space versus someone who is looking for competitors, someone who is looking for related items, and are they looking in the SERP itself versus on product detail pages? Is this more of a discovery instance or a conquesting instance for you? Um, all of that control is now right at your fingertips. And sponsor display, again, Amazon has shown uh, more commitment to this one ad type over the past calendar year than they have to anything else over such a short period of time. Uh, in addition to the remarketing capabilities, which I highly recommend everybody do at the very least at a low bid level, um, I will put out a caveat that sponsor display is very easy to overspend on. Um, we have seen that the bids are not treated as uh, sort of one-to-one -one as you might hope. Uh, there will be many measured instances of Amazon spending far above your stated bid, uh, whereas the overall campaign may still end at that, that lower level. So we do recommend just a very controlled approach to sponsor display, but if done right, uh, we've seen sponsor display can be just as effective as your standard sponsored product ads, if not more efficient for you while still doing a substantial amount of volume at maybe 10 or 15% of your budget. Um, another huge one is ad placements. Uh, we will get into the idea again of organic rank and sales velocity, but one of those big reasons why we care is this top of search placement. We want to make sure that when somebody is searching Amazon for men's running shoes, that even though you're Nike and everybody knows who Nike is, for whatever reason, Nike is still not visible from either an, an advertising perspective or an organic perspective. Uh, this gives you that ability to, at the very least on the ad side, pretty much snap your fingers and show up at the top of the page. Uh, we can also do this on product detail pages if you're more focused on conquesting. But uh, top of search actually is 
is you can uh, somewhat see here, tends to be the highest efficiency or I guess lowest ACOS uh, of all of the targets. And that is consistent across every account I've ever looked at pretty much. Uh, spirit campaigns, uh, as we now also uh, might know them by, is manual ASIN targeted campaigns. This lets you show up in that sponsored products related to section, um, similar to the sponsored display on conquesting of competitor pages. We highly recommend the strategy, again, in a controlled sense. Uh, there will definitely be pages where your products perform better on them than others. Uh, we really like to use these spirit campaigns highly in conjunction with our what we'll soon get to is an OPA strategy uh, where we actually target every single product individually uh, especially in automatic campaigns we can see which products you convert well on versus which products you do not convert well on and then getting much more aggressive within spirit campaigns on those specific pages cool um, value images is something that we've been seeing a lot of growth in the space over the past few years uh, this is where people are uh, instead of using standard product images that just show the product at different angles, uh, we're seeing people uh, leverage additional text and creative to make these, these more rich media. Uh, the effective goal here is taking the value propositions laid out within your featured bullets section of Amazon and overlay that text directly into the images. We see a significantly higher conversion rate and uh, overall stronger interaction uh, with products that have uh, either value images or enhanced brand content uh, on their page versus those that do not. And uh, as I uh, just mentioned, another way uh, we can see those value images, uh, just showing either product sizing, uh, those uh, just different capabilities for, uh, we see all of the different food that we can have here and quite a bit of text. Again, we actually see that people will read the text in images, uh, especially in bite-sized amounts. Uh, a lot more frequently than they will read the full bullets, even though those full bullets may be more helpful for the um, you know, relevancy component of Amazon's A9 algorithm. Uh, storefronts, uh, another thing we mentioned earlier in relation to sponsored brand ads, storefronts is a really good way to effectively give yourself a second website on Amazon. Uh, these become very strong landing pages for your ads, and that is likely where you're going to drive the majority of uh, your traffic for them from. So we do highly recommend if you are going to uh, utilize sponsored brand ads that you have a storefront uh, to just leverage the better landing pages, more control, and often stronger conversion rates. Uh, for promotions, especially as we are in that holiday season, we want to make sure that if you are not uh, running any promotions that you start thinking about them now. Um, the first easiest one, if you've never run any sort of promotion on Amazon, is free shipping. People have come to expect it right now. And just setting up a basic promotion of uh, get this product and do not pay shipping uh, can help conversion rates quite a bit, especially during holiday where people are already expecting to not have to pay shipping. Um, from there, a percentage off and specifically in the form of a coupon. Uh, coupons we find is just a standard 5% off, 10% off, uh, actually works quite well. Uh, we've uh, measured that this can have up to an 81% increase in expected sales uh, through A-B split testing. And especially, again, I'm going to really hammer home the idea of the percentage off via a coupon for holiday. Coupons do show up differently in Amazon than a standard percentage off deal. Uh, this shows up with a little green uh, call out called just as the word coupon right in the SERP to let someone know that there is in fact a discount on this page if you were to check out. And uh, again, this we've seen just much stronger results via couponing than other forms of standard promotions. If you want to get very aggressive, then we highly recommend lightning deals, especially as we get into Cyber Weekend, if you can pull off uh, one of those placements. Uh, we have seen up to a 10 times increase in at least short-term order volume, which does help out with your organic rank quite a bit. Uh, the caveats here, uh, the lightning deal has to be the largest discount that your product has given over the past two years. Um, and there, right now, it's looking like where it, you'll be able to still submit uh, through the end of September for that Cyber Weekend period, um, though Amazon may be moving up that date. Um, so highly recommend Lightning Deals if you have the inventory and the uh, ability to give away as much margin as they request. Lastly, as a bonus, if you want to get even more aggressive than Lightning Deals, 
giveaways are actually a very good way to drive up your organic rank. Uh, we have had some clients test out giveaways uh, more or less accidentally where they uh, list products for either zero dollars or otherwise accidentally turn on the giveaway feature. Um, and while the short-term results are not great, seeing that inventory just go away without any sales, uh, the overall organic rank is more or less night and day in terms of seeing your product just shoot up the, the SERP and get uh, a lot more visibility uh, moving forward. Uh, and as I keep calling it out, organic ranking matters so much, um, as, especially when you're getting into the holiday period. We usually see that advertising will uh, take up roughly 20 to 30% of your total sales. That means 70 to 80% of your sales are still coming from people just finding your product pages organically. This comes from people just conducting basic searches, seeing what shows up in their results page, and then buying whatever shows up there. And we have started measuring all of this based on, uh, are you in that high visibility top of search location? Are you in striking distance of that top of search? That's where if you were to advertise just a bit more aggressively, you could likely crack into the top of page. Uh, or are you anywhere in the rest of page? Are you just on striking distance of page one? Things like that. We use all of those to figure out how do we want to be ramping up your account for, uh, for holiday. One of the most prominent ways that we're doing this right now, we are having uh, accounts who are trying to gear up for holiday, identify which products they have the most solidified inventory for, where if we were to see a 50% increase, double the amount of sales that we're expecting that they'd have the inventory to sustain that. We then start uh, on a one-by-one -one custom method. We're going to identify a handful of search terms that you are already in striking distance locations for those products. And then we're going to find those those specific terms and build out advertising campaigns to let you during a pre-season when CPCs are lower, when the amount of conversions necessary to get into that top spot are going to be much smaller than if you were to attempt this in actual holiday itself. This lets you move up and all of a sudden, once you get that top of search organic placement, when we are in holiday season, you're now seeing that those 80% of your orders coming while you're in top of search placements. Uh, again, the, the amount of growth that you can see to individual product sales is significant when you start focusing on, on advertising and organic placements in this way. Uh, and I, I think this might be our last big uh, topic to cover, and that is OPA campaigns. Uh, this is the sort of bread and butter of the exclusive methodology. Uh, right now there is, and this has been the case for the past five years now, uh, no way to actually see what search terms uh, lead to conversions on individual products unless you are targeting your products individually. Uh, there's just no mapping in Amazon. They have the data, they will not give it to you. Uh, that's why we set up OPA from day one, we set up every single campaign with an individual product per ad group. So this is going to be one product per ad group. That's what OPA stands for. And this gives us so much information. We can, again, see not just what pro what terms are you converting on for each individual product so that we can build uh, more accurate and aggressive manual campaigns. Uh, we can then also see which product pages you are showing up on where you are either converting or not converting. This allows us to add certain uh, ASINs as negative product targets or as positive product targets within those spirit campaigns. And lastly, you cannot control the bid for products. You can only control bids for keywords and for ad groups. If you are targeting, call it 5,000 products within one ad group, which I have seen quite often uh, for people who, who come to have us sort of uh, analyze their account, in order to get more aggressive on any one product, you can't. All you can do is increase your, your base bid, and that will increase the bid on all 5,000 products. Even if you have uh, you know, 1,000 of them that are performing below your ACoS goal and another 200 that are performing above where you actually do want to get more aggressive, you still can't do that unless you're using a one product per ad group methodology. Uh, Nick, do you want to take the uh, category moves? Yep. Yeah, so uh, you know, often what we see is that a product is doing really well when it comes to 
uh, a mid-tail term, like there might be two qualifiers, blue and round widgets. And we do recognize that when you start to remove one of those qualifiers, the resulting search term may have, you know, 10 times, 100 times more search volume. These are difficult leaps to make, but they can be some of the most um, impactful. Very often people are coming to us with uh, only one main objective, which is help us scale. And what we're looking for are these surgical opportunities to scale into keywords that are very high search volume, but we are good candidates to be high sales velocity. Um, Mike, you want to talk a little bit about the relevance algorithm before we get into uh, match types? Absolutely. And uh, thank you for the, the pause as I just went into a little bit of a coughing fit. But got my water. Oh, no. You okay? Oh, we're good. We're, we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. Uh, in terms of auditing the relevancy algorithm, there's really two big areas that you want to be focusing on with, with Amazon. Uh, one, from an automatic campaign perspective, when Amazon is deciding which products are you serving in which locations, it's always good to just check in and make sure that your products are showing up where you want them. And not just are the products showing up where you want them, is Amazon serving the right product? Now, obviously, that's the case when you are putting the controls in Amazon's hands and trying to sort of rein them in afterwards. Sometimes you also need to rein yourself in when you are using those, those manual targets. This was uh, an example we found just doing the, the search for green sweaters, uh, trying to see if everything showing up was highly relevant. And the very top sponsored brand ad, which is coming from a manual keyword, uh, we have a blue and a purple uh, sweater being listed, but the green is not shown. Uh, this will either lead to lower uh, lower click through rates, uh, which, and if your ad's not getting clicked, you're not getting the sales. So that's never good. Uh, or potentially, uh, just depending on the landing page experience, if someone has to keep searching for that uh, that product that they're looking for, they may end up just getting a higher A cost as a result and lower conversion rates. In either case, just making sure that you are matching your products to the search terms that you're trying to target will just lead to overall stronger performance and allow you to scale. Awesome. Uh, and then moving into match types, I know we only have 10 minutes, so I breeze a little bit through this, but this is a very important topic. Amazon does allow you three primary match types, very similar to Google uh, in terms of how are you targeting the searches on Amazon. Broad match, which if anything is much more similar to uh, Google's broad modified match, uh, shows anytime the specific words in your search show up in that search, but in any order. So if you're uh, doing a uh, broad match on the term running shoes, and then someone ends up searching shoes for running, you will still show up. Phrase match is where anybody uh, is searching for those words. They have to be in that order, but it can still contain anything else. So if you are searching for uh, your advertising on running shoes as a uh, phrase and someone searches shoes for running, you will not show up. But if they're looking for men's running shoes, you still will. And then exact is exactly that uh, it needs to match within some variants. So uh, plurals will still be accounted for. Some slight misspellings will still be accounted for, but otherwise it's going to be an exact match. And where we do focus on is that exact variant. We want to make sure that likely if you are a mature account, if you are not looking at doing a significant amount of testing and you're more in that uh, defense position where you want to just maintain very strong performance, Exact matches where you want to be shifting at least 60% of your manual budget uh, because we can see up to a 10% savings on cost per clicks, where if your ad is being triggered via an exact match keyword or a broad match keyword for the same exact search, the exact match keyword will see up to a 10% savings in the cost per click that you were actually paying to Amazon. So when in doubt, if you can make something an exact match, do so those gains don't necessarily show up if you're talking about a term that maybe only gets searched once a, once every week. But if you are seeing any sort of significant click volume from a term, you will want to be targeting it via exact match. Awesome. Um, folks, we, we've been getting uh, requests to explain how we work with clients a little bit better just in case there's, there's interest. So we put together um, a very quick summary of you know if you're interested this is what we can offer right now so we build partnerships by setting a lot of ta time together we have a fitment meeting where one of our business development um, specialists try to understand whether your business actually fits us um, and then 
you'll have a meeting with either myself um, or my colleague Liam, and we're just getting permission on some initial ideas of this is how we want to grow your business. What do you think? And if you approve some of the lanes that we can talk about, then we present a complete growth plan. This is how your business is going to grow. This is what needs to happen. And uh, if we do need to dive into any aspects, like if you're already spending on Amazon or Google Ads, then we can do that as well. And then we'll come to a custom proposal. Um, in terms of this growth plan, just some highlights of the type of things that we actually do here. We try to define the best top of funnel. How are we gonna use transactional um, top of funnel, which is you know showing up when people are searching to buy something as well as targeted. We know something about the people who will buy, how do we get them? When we bring them into the funnel, what are we doing in terms of conversion and offsite remarketing to get them to the first sale? And what have we put together as um, the right mechanics, the right machine to take a first time customer and get the highest lifetime value out of them? What needs to happen? And we're crossing all over different channels to do this because that's the right way to market. Um, we organize your entire um, transactional top of funnel opportunity by brand conquesting and discovery. We make lots of observations empirically as well as in the accounts of how you're doing right now for your own brand, your competitors' brands, whether on Amazon you're, you're doing a good job with spirit campaigns. We start to analyze the market growth trends as well and figure out whether you are, you know, the Kleenex test, whether you're actually keeping up with the market, um, which is something you maybe uh, our marketing agency doesn't typically do, but a strategy marketing agency does. We try to go into discovery terms and try to figure out your visibility scenario there as well. We try to identify who your competitors are. And from a SEO visibility standpoint, try to ident identify the gaps. We'll also um, figure out whether you are utilizing the credit that you've earned with Google from a Google SEO standpoint. Um, you should have a relevance differential of four to one. It's a calculation that tells us whether Google is actually understanding your website properly and giving it credit. We'll figure out whether you need to go through a whole new content generation process for your SEO on your website, uh, whether you're, you're meeting the needs of the biggest penalties that were created between 08 and 12 um, for some of your most important keywords. Um, try to figure out how the SERP real estate is changing on the Google side. We will do some math on average lifts for conversion testing to see whether it would be profitable for you given where you are as a business. We're gonna to try to define our segments for remarketing and what we would probably want to do in terms of remarketing for each of those groups, especially as they get more engaged with your content and your website. We will use a tool called MILD to scrape all of your competitors' emails to see what they're up to in terms of their email cadences so we can figure out how competitive we need to be as well. We use the transparency section of Facebook to look at all your current ads and identify and juxtapose whether you're doing the right things that actually have high impact, like first purchase ads, user-generated content ads. We'll actually try to identify what user-generated content is out there that can be converted to ads. And in terms of Amazon specifically, so much of what we've talked about today is also brought in. We're gonna identify from all the main techniques, what are you using and what are you not using? The opus structures, um, the right match types, et cetera. We'll break down where you are either wasting or not spending enough in terms of the breakdown of techniques, where you're getting good inflection points. We'll identify all the keywords that are draining your budget. We'll identify all the keywords that actually need more budget. We'll even figure out out of all the products that you have, how many of them are giving you a lot of views, but you're not winning the buy box, so you're not making any sales, where you should actually do price optimization versus where you win the buy box all the time, but you're not getting enough visibility, and that's where you need to do more advertising. So all the insights that you may require, we'll also try to, to do a, a, a subsection, identify a subsection of your products that, um, have achieved so much statistical validity and so much performance that they've met, met a threshold for you to start advertising immediately. You're just wasting your time by not advertising them. So this is the growth plan. Now we'll go into questions, but 
we are going to ask if anyone does want us to do this growth plan. Um, keep in mind, we will have to have a fitment conversation first. Not, not everyone is going to be a fit for our agency, um, and vice versa. But if you are interested in having a team that's been doing this for 23 years, is top one percentile performance in the country when it comes to e-commerce, um, and you want to know exactly what we would do in your situation, then uh, give us a give us an app bet. Let us try to figure it out for you. And I'm just going to give another few moments here. We'll shut this down in three, two, one. Appreciate everyone being transparent with us and honest and um, also just giving us a sense where, of where your heads are at. Um, let's get let's get QA here. Um, let's see. We don't really have we only really have one question right now from earlier from Jenny. Um, do you want to answer this one, Mike? Absolutely. So for sponsored brand ads, do you need the storefront? Um, and I see that you're still waiting for your trademark to come in. So the it is a, a somewhat, uh, it depends kind of an answer. The In an ideal world, yes, you will want your storefront for sponsored brand ads. You will see better performance if you are driving somebody to a strong storefront page experience. Um, I see that because you're waiting for your trademark. Uh, I'll also note that in order to use sponsored brand ads at all, you do need to be brand registered. So if you are not yet brand registered, even if you wanted to, you wouldn't be able to advertise via sponsored brand ads. Uh, but assuming you have your trademark and you're making that decision of should I be running these sponsored brand ads before we have the storefront or not, then if timing allows, I would hold off and just try to uh, wait to to run those ads until you have the the landing page experience ready if that is going to take a significant amount of time there's no harm in running a, a low bid approach using the custom landing pages where you just define a handful of products that are highly relevant to it um, so both are options but we do usually recommend holding off until you have the storefront great question uh, i see a few more mike, coming, coming yeah in. mike well, while you answer the more detailed questions uh tom you said should we use amazon fba before we answer that can you tell us a little bit about um uh your your, your product line or who you target or is it a brand just so we have a better sense of that um thank you awesome cool i see a question coming in uh do you help rectify issues through amazon uh, so you're a brand owner and Amazon's making changes to your site and you have to be uh, requesting fixes through online submissions. Uh, we absolutely can. Uh, that's not part of our advertising uh, solution, but that is something that we uh, have helped out clients with. Usually the built-in aspect of the cases we'll work with Amazon on are on the advertising side, but we do have a data team who is uh, able to submit those cases and, and take over the uh, very uh, not fun, we'll call it, experience of Amazon case management. So that is something that's definitely within the, the realm of what we do for our clients. Um, assuming you need the buy box in order to get a flash sale approved. Uh, so yes, that is definitely a, a very good point. Uh, in order to run really any promotion on a product detail page, you need to be the buy box owner of that product detail page. Now, obviously, if you are running a discount, uh, you can always just update your, your base price. If you're if you're not winning the buy box, updating that price, as Nick alluded to earlier, that's the best way to get that buy box uh, in your favor, whether it's from a competitor or if Amazon just sees that that product is being sold for less money elsewhere. Uh, making sure that you have the buy box is going to be number one, and then any other uh, promotions you want to run on top of it would, would come afterwards. Great question. Awesome. So we're seeing that the uh, FBA question is uh, in regards to fashion belts. Um, I honestly, I've seen, especially during COVID, I've seen the clients with the absolute highest success rates were those that were actually not doing FBA, or I should reframe that and say, we're not relying on FBA. For in those instances when Amazon was severely uh, backlogging, uh, uh, their orders. We saw uh, items delayed for, depending on the market, up to 30 days fulfillment. Uh, the clients who were, they had inventory on hand and they were able to 
uh, own their own fulfillment process, they were the ones that saw by far the highest rates of growth during this uh, March to current period. That being said, in general, FBA is a, a very good idea. Um, mostly I chalk it up to where will you have the best margins? Do you have the, the sort of uh, internal infrastructure set up to make fulfillment an easy process? And if you do, I do put a lot of stock in uh, maintaining that control. Granted, you will technically lose a, a point in Amazon's favor for the, if everything else is equal, uh, are you doing uh, FBA versus not FBA? FBA will get that point. But if you do not need that point in order to get the buy box or either to grow your account, then I do recommend sticking more with uh, self-controlled, uh, fulfilled by merchant prime. Uh, if you do not have those capabilities and you can afford to do prime via FBA, in those cases, I do absolutely recommend doing FBA. Um, and for what I'm imagining are going to be somewhat uh, cheap to ship items of, of fashion belts, I can't imagine the size is going to be too cumbersome. Those are usually very, uh, and I'm assuming they likely have a, a decently high uh, AOV price point. Those are very good items to use FBA for. Uh, again, if you don't have a, a strong um, sort of infrastructure internally to manage that, FBA is perfect for those sort of lightweight um, but high price point items. Awesome. Um, there were no other questions so far. Folks, thank you guys for, for taking so much time with us today. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, some basics that were revisited, hopefully quick enough, but also um, some more details around the techni techniques that are most impactful right now. Again, if you do want a copy of this presentation or a recording, uh, please write to sales at exclusiveconcepts.com. Subject, um, Amazon Holiday is really helpful if you do that. Hope everyone has a wonderful week. Um, be prepared for some amazing sales uh, this Q4 with the holidays. Mike, thank you so much for all your help with all this. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you all for joining.